Wow, come on now. <laughs> that doesn't excite anyone. Come on now. The phrase fits that type of behavior. That's right, Miss Wendy. It fits the behavior. Y'all wait till she get on here. Y'all wait till she open up her mouth, baby. Y'all know when I turn to her, you know beast, no beast, lion, no lion. I turned to her when we went down, amen, a few years ago to our pastor's anniversary. And I say, my God, who is this lion right here? You identified it right away. I said, I got to, we got to have her, Pastor. We got to have her. <laughs> Amen. She didn't know I was plotting and planning on her, even way back then. Welcome, everyone. I'm Pastor Carol from Shekinah Glory Ministries. Amen. Where I pastor alongside with my husband, Pastor Nick Simpson. Amen. Here in Las Vegas. Hello, Shekinah Glory Ministries. Hello, SGM. Hello, those that are viewing. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Kisses, kisses and hugs hello everyone we are so excited that you stopped by our platform this wednesday to view our one hour of power this is going to be so phenomenal this evening and you guys know what to do amen for pastor nick who has allowed us queen esthers to mount the platform and told us to go ahead we appreciate king of hospitals amen he's a man's man he said get on out there amen so put your hands together for the man of god pastor nick simpson woo, 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 who i call hashtag my man now y'all know today is wednesday get into it it's payday <laughs> Hallelujah. Now I get excited about paydays. I do women just know this, okay? Get excited about paydays. Uh, don't be predictable, women. Men are hunters by nature. Keep them on the hunt. Amen? That's the information I just threw in your glove. Hashtag catch it. Now we're getting ready to get into it. You guys know the rules of engagement in this game. Share, like, love, and comment. Amen? And give us some hearts. Because this fabulous woman of God want to see her amen corner and me too. Come on, give them up today. Amen. And I'm going to talk a little about this beautiful woman of God from way from the ATL. Amen. With Pastor Dewey Smith, E. Dewey Smith. Amen. I'm telling you, this is a phenomenal woman of God. How she just put things together. I'm telling you, it's like she just did like that. And I thought, oh, what happened? <laughs> the lights came on. I was like, my God. I couldn't wait to meet her personally. She was on the stage when I met her. I couldn't wait. I said, when she come down, she's mine. I'm going to guard my way right over to her. I sure am. Okay, the Bible says the kingdom of God survives and the violence taken by force. You stay in the back if y'all want to, but if you want something this season, you better be like David. Pursue, overtake, and conquer. Go get it. Amen. Stop playing around. Get into it. Amen. I'm getting ready to introduce on this platform Sister Wendy Jackson. She is an event planner, a trainer, a workshop facilitator. Amen. And I'm going to read a little bit of her bio because I want to and it's my business. Okay. Uh, busy, uh, busy professionals and influential leaders around the world rely upon the excellence and expertise of event planner extraordinaire Wendy Jackson. Her uncanny ability to take a vision from concept to reality is the breath of fresh air. 
every visionary longs to experience in their, their organizations. Wendy Jackson is a highly resourceful, creative, and experienced planner who brings a high level of specialized support amen, an organization to every endeavor she oversees. She has a unique way of turning what seems to be an ordinary event, workshop, or training session into an unforgettable experience. Leaders rave of her impeccable, impeccably imaginative nature. Thus, she has become known to find a way to interject every affair with a fabulous factor that leaves audiences in awe. Whether her clients are hosting an extensive five-day conference with international attendees or a private half-day executive meeting or an album release party, Wendy, Wendy is the go-to person for hosting events with ease, excellence, and freedom from the hassle of remembering the details. High-profile leaders with an appreciation for excellence, value, having direct access to Wendy because she could galvanize and motivate a team to loyal, committed, high productive workers with minimal and sometimes no budget. That's our kind of girl, okay? But it, we pay we pay the cost to be involved. Wendy shares that it is her passion for people that fuels her creativity and allows her to produce such remarkable experiences. I love to see the look on my clients' faces when they walk into a room and realize that that uh, what that what's before them is bigger and better than what they imagined. Wendy strongly believes that whenever there's passion, purpose, a plan, and a team, anything is possible. After learning of a close friend's bout with breast cancer, Wendy decided to leverage her passion for people and knack for creating phenomenal experiences to make a difference in the lives of those around her. Thus, Posh for a Purpose was born. Posh for a Purpose, an annual breast cancer awareness gala, was created to unite churches and the communities they serve one night, once a year, for one cause. A native of Atlanta, Georgia, Wendy Jackson is attended, is attended the, uh, has attended the prestigious Bellman, Spelman College, where her love for events began. He, uh, her influential client list includes the NFL Super Bowl events team, Dr. E. Dewey Smith Jr., men of standard, and the gospel recording artist Isaac Carey and James Fortune. And the list goes on. Currently, Wendy works for the Del Cab County School System as the parent liaison. When not planning an event, Wendy finds joy and balance uh, traveling while spending time with her husband, Derek Jackson, and her grandson, Logan. And that's the truth. I watched her thoroughly. Believe me, okay? So get ready and welcome to the platform, SGM, and those that are viewing this beautiful gift to the body of Christ, Wendy Jackson. Welcome, woman of God. Hello. Thanks for having me. Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited to be here this evening. Amen. Amen. <laughs> we just want to uh, we just want to hear from you, woman of God, because uh, you know what? Uh, hospitality is all about the love. Yes. All about the love. <laughs> yeah. All about the love. And we want you to tell us. Okay, so um, tonight um, we're going to discuss a few things about um, just being hospitality and how hospitality will take your event from being just ordinary to extraordinary. And hospitality is very, very, very important when um, you are doing events. It's 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 uh, it's at the top of the list. It's custom it's customer service, hospitality, all of that mixed in one. And without that element involved in your event planning. You don't have a good event. I can tell you that. I can tell you that from, from experience. So let me just share a couple of things with you guys that will help your event be as fabulous as you are. Um, <laughs> one thing I know about, so we're going to talk about the hospitality in a church arena. Okay. Not on an event level. We're going to talk about it in a church arena. And the reason why I want to do that is because sometimes when we volunteer for the church, we don't take it as serious as when we volunteer for other organizations. We feel like church is our home, so I can be late or I can I can not show up. I can I can put my name on the list, but I'm not going to show up. And I'm not going to tell anybody I'm not going to show up. That's not good business when you're doing when you're trying to help out a church. If you if you say you're going to volunteer, I think that you should follow through and volunteer. And if you're not going to be able to make it, please tell the leader of that organization or that or that event that you're not going to be able to make it so that they can put someone else in that spot. Because if they know that you're coming, they have a list of people that's coming, that means that they have 
um, planned out for where everybody will be. So if somebody don't show up, that that space is empty. So they need for you to show up. So it's imperative that we are just as um, enthusiastic and just as committed to our church volunteerism as we are to other things that we do as, as far as work, um, other um, things that we volunteer for. It is imperative that we do the same thing. Once you volunteer, you must be able to accept assignments. Um, I, I know sometimes in church, when you come to a when you come to volunteer, um, you may not want to be the person that's sitting in the back uh, by yourself, uh, checking off names. That's not what you want to do. You want to be with the guests um, up front. So you can see everything that's going on. But sometimes when you come to volunteer, that's not your assignment. Your assignment is to sit in the back in the corner and check those names off because that position is just as important as a, as the position um, with that person that's with the guest or the person that's in the front of the room. All positions that are volunteered positions are important because if it wasn't, we wouldn't we wouldn't have that position available. Right. Did you agree with me there? I agree. Yeah. So let's make sure that once you get an assignment, don't get an attitude because that's not what you want to do. Because when you come to volunteer, I come to volunteer and do whatever you ask me to do. I didn't come to volunteer with stipulations. Please don't come to volunteer with stipulations, because if you volunteer with stipulations, then you make the you make it hard on the person that's leading the team. So now she, she has this thing laid out for you and you are not willing to do the assignment that was attached to you. So we have to make sure that when we come to volunteer, we accept the assignment. Um, we also um, think that when we um, volunteer, that we can't receive constructive criticism because we're at a church. If you're at church, you still should be able to receive constructive criticism. Amen. We're having an event and we say, um, don't leave your area until it's time to leave your area and you leave your area and some and the leader comes over and say something to you you don't get an attitude with the leader because she asked you not to leave the area you right. she wants to stay in the area for a certain amount of time for a reason again everything that's done is done because that's what's needed at that time so if you can't if you can't get an attitude because now you th now she has to deal with you with your attitude instead of continuing to deal with the event and that's what we're all there for so mm -hmm. let's make sure that we're able to receive constructive criticism. Mm -hmm. Is that okay with you guys? That's okay. All right. And also when you are volunteering, make sure that we that that you we have your undivided attention. We can't volunteer and stand at the door with our cell phone. We just can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> because when people walk by, I'm on my cell phone and we're supposed to be greeting the people. <laughs> that's, not, that's not good. These cell phones will take over our lives. So I have a no cell phone zone when you're volunteering for me. You cannot have your cell phone out. Now you can. We we, we all have a time where you know if, if if there's something important going on in your life, let your leader know that I may have to step off the floor because I just had a baby and I still decide to come and volunteer. But I might have to you know check on my whatever the case may be. Right. But don't just disappear or don't just pull your cell phone out in the middle of an event because that's very unprofessional. Um, talking to your neighbor. I know we're church and we want to say hi, we want to talk about, because we hadn't seen each other probably in a week if you're volunteering on a Sunday or a Friday or whenever, then you want to talk to your neighbor because she's volunteering too, but you can't talk to your neighbor and also be present for the event. You have to be present for the event. If you're present for the event, we're not talking on our cell phones. We're not talking to our neighbors. And the hard one is we're not fellowshipping. <laughs> I know it's hard. And I don't, and, and I'm not saying you can't give a quick hug, but we can't give a hug and say, how's your mama and girl, what did you do last night? <laughs> I haven't seen you since Easter. So let's give a hug and move on. And then after you finish volunteering, you know that person is there. So go and talk to the person after the event. But yeah. you can't have a whole conversation in line when you're greeting people with each and every person that come by. Because you're, you're most, if you're volunteering, a lot of times you, you pretty much know a lot of people because you volunteer a lot. So people know your face. 
and you're you know you you run around the building so you you're gonna you're gonna have some you're gonna want to say hi and you're gonna want to uh give a hug or whatever but we cannot linger in that in that space okay mm -hmm. okay <laughs> all right um a lot of times when you're volunteering it is um good to have your um as leaders it's good for you to have your team to dress alike Mm -hmm. And you dress alike, you, you have uniformity. With uniformity, we tend to um, act in, in a uniform way. Mm -hmm. So if we're all dressed alike, you're not going to want to be the one standing out doing something that's wrong or something that's not what everybody else is doing because people are know immediately that's not what's going on with this group of people. Mm -hmm. so, and, and also, when you dress alike, it's easy for people to find the person to help them. Um, they already know the person with the black shirt and the white pants. Those are the people that are helping with this event. So if I have a question, where's the restroom? I know to go to somebody with a black shirt and white white pants that's standing up. It's just, it just makes it easier and visible because the name tags aren't, aren't always that big and you can't always see them from far away. So if you have on the same thing, it just makes it easier for everyone to be in uniform and for people to be able to locate you for assistance. Mm -hmm. All right. And let's all speak the same language. OK, oh. let's say good morning. Let's say good morning. Not hey, girl. No, we're not saying hey, girl. Today. We're saying good morning. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to be a little professional today. We're going to make sure that we're all being cordial to each and every person that come in. And um, and we're going to make sure that we're all um, being in a. Um, a Christ like posture when we're at church, we, we're going to make sure that we're that we're that we're. That we're taking this very serious and we're, we're all speaking the same language meaning that we're all uh, have uh, have good words that coming out that's coming out of our mouths we're not saying we're not trying to be um real relaxed but you, you don't have to be overly professional because we're a church and we're still a family but we also want to make sure that we're all on the same page when we're greeting and interacting with our uh, guests okay mm -hmm. um and make sure that you have a place for your team to meet and 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 um if there's if there is a problem so if something's going on and your leader is you know your leader is going to be all around so if you have a place for your team to meet if something is going on and you need to have a question answered or something like that make sure you have that available for your team and then it will make it easier for you and make it easier for the leader to make sure that 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 is um available for them mm -hmm. um so um Another thing we do as church people, and as people, period, but I know in church, when people walk in, sometimes we make assumptions. Right. We walk in the door, and, and, and we know Pastor Carol is so fly and beautiful. So she walk in, and everybody's like, oh, hi, how are you? Oh, my God, you look amazing. Hi, baby. Oh, look at Pastor Carol. And the lady behind her is, is looking like me, like she homeless. <laughs> not she just got off from work. I just got off from work. So I don't get the same greeting as Pastor Carol because I just got off from work and I'm not as as I'm not I'm I'm not as punchy as she is. And, and so but if we if we, we can't make the assumption that this person don't need that same type of love and attention that you just gave the person. That's fine. So don't assume and don't assume just because a person that uh, looks a certain way that they are uh, a power. Or because the person looks a certain way that they are beneath you in Come your mind, or that they are homeless, or they are uh, some uh, someone that's, that's that's struggling right now. And if they are, that means they need more love than than, than you can ever than you can ever think of. So let's make sure that we don't make assumptions. And we and 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 I know another thing we do in the church is we uh, sometimes when the church. When, when people come in the door that we know, we, we again, we give them all the accolades, all the hellos and all of that. And then when somebody come in that you don't know, you just be like, hi. <laughs> no. No. I've also seen, I've also seen, now we do that, we're, we're guilty of this too in the church. If you're <laughs> serving food. Right. The person in front of me is a member. The person behind is not a member. The person in front of me, what piece of chicken you want? Oh, I want a leg and a, and a thigh. Oh, girl, here you go, here you go. The person behind you, you don't know them, so you just throw a thigh there. You didn't ask them. You have to be. 
<laughs> you have to be consistent. These are small and they're and, and they're and they're comical. But let me tell you something. It makes a world of difference in the eyes of your visitors. Yes. And 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 we do it unconsciously. I'm not saying that it's mean. I'm not saying that it's it's something that we shouldn't do. It's just we do it unconsciously. That's how yeah. we are. You love somebody, you want to give them extra. You want to give them that extra. But mm -hmm. you got to remember that those people already know how wonderful and how and how lovely your personality is right. and, and how great this church is. Your visitors, they don't know that. So we mm -hmm. got to make them feel as welcome as we are, are as we feel welcome in mm -hmm. that church. Right. And you do that by being fair across the board. You just do mm -hmm. you treat everybody the same as much as possible. Correct. All right. Always and and and, and I just say always leave our people, whether they're a visitor or a member, with, with a great first impression. Just right. make sure that when they come, that they have a great first impression. We want them to leave thinking that this was the best thing since sliced bread. I <laughs> enjoyed my experience from the time I walked in the door until the time I exit the building. So you want to make sure that all of those things are um, are taken care of so you have to have a great first impression and that first impression is a is a warm smile it's a a hearty hello or if you want to hug a person that's it and you're comfortable with that then and they're comfortable with that you hug them but and make sure that if, and so you i want us to also be cognizant especially after covid everybody don't like to hug no. so if you go in and and it looks like that person is hesitant don't hug them just right. give, do like, you know, give, give, right. embrace yourself. You right. know, you have to be cognizant of the other person. Some people don't like you in their personal space and it's nothing that you did. They don't know you. So don't take it personal. Right. Just, em just embrace whatever it is and give them a warm hearty Hello. Just like mm -hmm. that. But right. if you feel like you need to hug them or you sometimes your spirits say this person needs a hug and you want to give them a hug and that's OK if they will allow it. But make sure that it's OK with them. Don't force them to do anything that they don't want to do. Right. Right. Um, do you have any questions for me while I'm, I know I'm rattling? <laughs> no, you go right ahead because that's that's falling in line with all the questions I have so far. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll say I'll save some good ones for you. I, I got something <laughs> for you, Miss Wendy. I got something for you. Okay, I just want to make sure I didn't. Um, I was just going on and on. I didn't. No. I didn't get an opportunity to ask me a question or two. No, you are feeling right in. You're doing um, leaders. Now I want to talk to about leaders for a minute. The yeah. leaders of the teams. Uh huh. Now remember, when you're in church and you're volunteering, we're mm -hmm. all all volunteers. Even the leaders, mm -hmm. we are volunteers as well. So don't get high and mighty just because you're the leader. Come on, you're still a part of the team. Right. You are just a person that we have to have someone to keep it in order and to make sure that it's organized and to make sure that it's, that, that it's all brought together. Mm -hmm. But you are still a part of the team. Don't be so high and mighty that you can't do whatever you ask your team to do. Ooh. That's what I pride myself in. My team loves the fact that whatever I ask them to do, I will do as well. It yeah. doesn't matter. We, we have to pick up paper. We have to mop. We have to sweep. We have to wipe, wipe tables. We have to gather uh pick up glasses, we have to uh, get plates off table, whatever the case may be, mm -hmm. everybody has to do it if Come on. that's what needs to be done. Right. If that's what needs to be done. So if you have people that's there and they need a little help, go and help them. Don't be so high and mighty that you're just standing there watching and, and you see that, that that's an area that's lacking. We as leaders of, of a hospitality team or usher teams or whatever the case may be, we want to make sure that we're able to get in there and do the work as well, because we are a team. We're not just um, leaders. We're all one team. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and so what you want to do, you want as leaders, you want to create you a five star team. Uh, whenever um, you always open it, you always open volunteering. Up, you always open it up for everybody to uh, volunteer. Mm -hmm. But I also hand pick people it's people that in your it's people that's in your congregation or in your audience that will never open their mouths to right. to, to or to to come forward but when you ask them they are some of the best people to yeah. help them. they're some of the best people but sometimes we don't ask anybody we ask the same people over and over again and right. when you open it up, it's fine. I want those people that's going to come naturally. I do want those people. But we also have to make it a point to ask people 
um, that that you see sitting in the pews that you see all the time. They come to church all the time. You want to get them involved because anytime you are vested in anything, it makes you want to be more involved in whatever it is, church or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So we want to get those people that come, you see them come to church every Sunday, enjoying service, but they leave right out the door. I watch those people. I watch them um, uh, worship. I watch them have a, a great time in the service, and I and 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 I watch them not doing nothing. So then I go and I <laughs> ask them. <laughs> I love it. I go and I ask them. Yes. Uh, we're having a talent show to, uh, next week, and I would love for you to be a judge. Anything, whatever you want them. To, I would love for you to volunteer on the team, and you just talk to them about it. And maybe that's not their that maybe they don't want to do that. But I'll tell them right then. I'm going to keep you in mind for the next event that we have because you want to make sure that you use everybody in your church as much as possible right. to volunteer. We don't have to keep using the same people over and over again. Right. Over and get them all frustrated and wore out and and then they and, and then you know when you choose the people all the time they become complacent they become they think they know everything uh -huh. and now and and and, 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 then, and, then, and, then, and then it becomes a little different Messy. so you have to make sure you spread the love get all the volunteers we can so that we can rotate them in and out right and you have to choose the right people too you know like i said if that person said if, if she tell you i, I don't um i don't want to do that and then he's like, you sure? Uh, I'm sure. That's really not my con. I'm saying, I really need you to do that. Don't make them do it because when they get there, they're not going to be good for it. They're mm -hmm. not going to be good for that project. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ask them what's their strength. Oh, yeah, I would love it when we, when you all have the fall festival because I love kids and I would love to Whoop, there it is. So there you go. You, you you save them, get the name and information. You save them. We have a fall festival. This person likes to do this. So I'll put her on this type of team. Don't put, don't put people where they don't want to be because if you're asking them and they're telling you that that's not their strength or they really don't feel comfortable doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, when you're volunteering, it's hard to get people to um, galvanize and do what you need them to do when they're not comfortable doing right. it. So, and, and they're not getting paid, so they're volunteering. So right. we got to make sure that that's something that they want to do, not something that they're made to do. Right. All right. And again, make sure you offer it to the whole congregation and uh, or your whole audience. Make sure everybody has an opportunity to sign up for whatever it is um, you need to volunteer for. Also, leaders, don't be afraid to train people in your on your team to lead. Right. You can't be there all the time. Mm -hmm. Or even if you're there. I if, if, if you're having a, 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 an event and it's 500 people. You can't lead 300 volunteers. You're gonna have to have some more leaders to be on the other on the other side of the building. You're gonna have to have some leaders to be in the kitchen uh, uh, doing leading that part. So you have to train people to lead as if you're leading. Now everybody knows how to lead, but on my team, I need you to lead as if I was leading. Now right. on your team, when 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 I'm working for you and I'm following you. Then I'll lead as you need me to lead. Mm -hmm. But so 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 remember that when when you're teaching them to lead, make sure that they know that you're teaching them to lead as if you, I was leading. And I know that you're going to add some of your 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 uh, uh, expertise to it. But I also need for you to follow these instructions. So you're going to train your people and get and develop them into um, good leaders and let them um, let them do some leading and let them be leaders as well. Because right. guess what? You're not gonna be able to lead that project all the time. And we wanna also have different leaders in the in the church too. We, we don't wanna keep the same leaders for 30 years. We wanna be able to have different leaders. And the only way you can do that is that you train them and develop them and get them ready to lead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and and let, let, let your team members make some of the decisions. Um, I know sometimes we, we, we we do a project and um, I like to incorporate what would you all like to wear? I, sometimes I tell them because if, if it's in a, if it's in a big event and, you know, I, so I might lay out what, what, what I, what I need everybody to wear, but sometimes you want to open it up and say, what, what do you all like to wear? What, what, what do you all want to wear on this event? Uh, how do you all think we should stand for this event? Do y'all think we should have the tables over? Ask them for suggestions because mm -hmm. just because you're the leader, again, you're a part of the team. So right. you need them to help you make the, the decisions. You're not the smartest person in the room. 
And well, if you are, you need to get another room because <laughs> we want to make sure that everybody has an opportunity to put in to, to put some input in. Because if it's an event that you're doing, there are some creative people on the team you you just wouldn't even know because you didn't give an opportunity to make any suggestions. So allow your team to make some suggestions on how we should stand this week, how we should what what we should wear this week. Um, how many people should be in this area this week, you know, and, and things of that nature. Just let them make some suggestions as well and make sure that we are um, giving them that opportunity. Mm -hmm. All right. All and right. <laughs> now I can go on and on, but I'm going to. Um, you are so good. I mean, I'm just looking like, OK, she's all at SGM because we believe in. And that's why I, I, I said I had to bring you, because when I went down there, uh, there's a model, uh, and a, um, uh, because I'm an event planner by nature too. I really am. And so I love what I saw when I got down there, uh, even though I'm a talker, uh, like you, we, we're talkers, but we're very observant as well because mm -hmm. we're talking and looking and booking. We're yes. talking and gathering information. We're talking and we are assessing and evaluating the atmosphere, uh, Event planners do that. They really are. They're they're working the room to see, you know, what's good, what can be better, you know, what can be implemented, what can be taken out and extracted. <laughs> All those right. things are happening with an event planner type of mindset. And uh, and I, I I I gazed at everything. I looked at everything. And uh, and I, I even the way you were dressed, uh, the way you had the platform set up, the stage, and everything uh, was just very uh, appealing, very palpable. Uh, I loved everything about it, everything about it, how you uh, put the teams and everything together, because this was a big gala. It was mm -hmm. an actual, it just wasn't a, an event. It was a gala. Yeah. Uh, and the way you present everything, because I teach uh, uh, from my 30 year, 10 year, you know, working 25 years, that representation is everything. That's because right. people, even though they were coming to a church event, they may not be able to assess uh, Pastor Dewey uh, and his wife's spirit, your spirit, the team spirit, but they can certainly write uh, on, 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 on coming on the site, uh, can assess the representation. That's uh, right. And it's everything. It's, it spoke volumes, even though I'm a part of the ministry as far as Pastor Nick and I being under Pastor Dewey. Uh, I was just, I was very, very pleased in how you guys behave and your mannerisms. And, and I want to say this. You know, when you are setting up these events and the people come into play uh, that's on certain teams that you put together and you've got the leader of the team and you've got those that are in the tier, how do you teach your people, because uh, I know what we do here, uh, how to create the atmosphere for the event, even if it's just church service? How mm -hmm. do you teach them? Because the atmosphere, of course, we got the praise and worship going on, but there's an atmosphere that I walked into that people, we want people to walk into as well at Shekinah Glory Ministry that makes them ready to receive what the event is going to be, whether it's church, uh, whether it's an actual event. How do you how do you teach your people to create an atmosphere before the event takes place? So um, I always, I have this thing called uh, the B attitudes of hospitality. Ooh, <laughs> run them down. <laughs> and um, what 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 they are is we have to be ready for change at any moment. You have to be open to constructive criticism. Mm -hmm. You have to be patient. Mm -hmm. You have to be well groomed. You have to be nice. Simply nice. You have to be responsible. You have to be friendly. You have to be humble. You have to be a servant and have a servant mind. You have to be willing to go the extra mile. You have to be a team player. You have to be easy to get along with. You have to be on time. And my favorite one, be full. Eat before you come to volunteer. Yes. <laughs> That is a big one. <laughs> People come and volunteer, and then, and thirty minutes later, oh my stomach growling. Oh, I smell all this food. <laughs> I need you to be full because there's no guarantee that we're gonna eat. I always now if it's a long event or if it's an event, I'm always gonna feed my team. That's that's the right. given. Right. But the timing may not be your timing, so right. I need for you to be full. So just. <laughs> Make sure that you have it. 
They come and they like, well, I'm a diabetic. I said, well, you knew you were diabetic when you volunteered and you knew that the, the, the program was going to start at seven o'clock. So that means you should have got up a little early, took your insulin and ate whatever you needed to eat before right. you came to volunteer. I'm not trying to be insensitive, but right. when we take on responsibility, it's like going to work. I mean, volunteerism is very important. And, and some people just don't think that that's the, I mean, I'm just volunteering. No, you're not just volunteering. Right. You signed up to help out in this particular area and you're very, very, very much needed. So right. because you're so needed, I need for you to do everything in your power to make yourself good and comfortable so that when you get there, you are available to our guests. That is so wonderful. And let me tell you something. I love that. Now, you know, guys, Okay, SGM, you're on here. You listen to this. Now, we operate in a lot of this that she's teaching, 90%, 95%. But we're going to, you know, make some adjustments. And so I'm going to have her email that to me. So when I give it over, say, oh, that was on the Wednesday. Wow, with Wendy Jackson from the ATL. Because you guys, if you begin to get an opportunity to go down to, to uh, see Pastor with us or whenever you go down to Atlanta, you go visit, you know, uh, the church there you will say, oh, wow, this is active in their church. You will see this is not fluff. I wouldn't have brought her on here if it was fluff because y'all know I love everybody. That's what <laughs> But I don't put my name on anybody. Now, come on now, hashtag catch it. I love everybody, but I don't put my name on just anybody. That's what we don't do at the SGM Essence Leaders, Pastor Nick and myself, because I don't want you to take that check to the bank and it will bounce, okay? <laughs> so <laughs> so just understand the nature of that beast. And so I just, I appreciate that because uh, uh, when, you know, we tell people, Pastor Nick said from the very first day we opened up, if, you, you know, leaders, you know, because we only opened up, and I love this about him, what we were able to house, meaning we don't want back in the day, you know, I've been in, in the way for 40 years and him over 30, over 30, 30 plus years, and we didn't want to open up auxiliaries just because we can you know, that's because right. that's what we were taught. We mm -hmm. opened up where we can make sure that we have a leader over that they can, they don't have to have five different hats uh, all the time or 20 hats like we used to wear back yeah. in the day because we want to work smarter, not harder. And mm -hmm. that means to have a strategy, a plan, and then implement it as right. such. And so, but he said, if you're having a bad day, yeah. uh, please stay at home because we don't want people to put in the street. That's a mean old church over there. Ask him and then all of them and that. Them is a mean, you know, he said, don't do that because I'm a kind man. And y'all know Pastor Carol is a kind woman. Don't do that to us. Just stay at home and rest. We're okay because we always have, the, you know, the leader, like you said, in the team and we can abstract from the team and they, the person that's over the team will get a, you know, uh, that that has to go out and relax uh, can talk to those that was that's within the group that they're leading and someone else will stand up for them uh, in that actually you know in that position on that Sunday and be kind it's imperative uh, to be kind to people because nothing works on the team when you're not kind and let me tell you something uh, I did uh, event planning at our last church and so I would I, and I'm like you, I actually handpicked my team because mm -hmm. I wanted the five people that I know that will behave as uh, an extension of the ministry of our leaders and of an extension of who I am as the leader of the group. And I wanted at my registration table, those that can handle uh, constructive criticism, people come and argue, my name was on the list and yes. I found the <laughs> And just keep, I said, don't argue with no one. I paid right. 35 of my $50. And, you know, you're going to get people that's going to be difficult. And yes. I need people that's going to be working with me on a team that can handle difficult people and still be kind uh, and don't have a facial. I'm going to slap them in a minute, but they try to act nice. Right. That's right. That's right. You got to be able to handle these people. That's and right. I told them, I said, I just write their names down and I will handle them yeah. after the fact because you get people sometime in leadership. You know, that's I deal with leaders because they come in and they feel entitled. They feel above and they come in with bad character. So I tell the people, write their first and last name down, even if it's Bishop Ho Ho and First Lady Ho. Just write their name down. And after the fact, I would say, you know, I would make a phone call or pull them to the side and say, Man of God, could you guys please not behave in that manner anymore with our <laughs> team? I mean, please, thank you. So I'm sorry. 
<laughs> all the fire and flowers sips it back and back. And you know what? It will bring to their attention is mm -hmm. this how you deal with those that serve you unto the Lord because they're volunteering. Don't overstep God's people. I have a big thing about that because people don't have to serve us as unto the Lord. And so, uh, and, and also, you know, because we've already groomed our leaders about in our right. in their teams, they have That's groomed right. their teams, it, it funnels down and, the, you know, in the ranking, how to behave with people, whether they're in high standards or mm -hmm. low standards, keep the same bubbly, good morning, and everybody yes. gets treated well when they dress to the mat, to the nine, because I'm coming in wherever I go. You know this, Wendy. <laughs> and when I come to the ATL, where I'm coming to the nine. That's my representation. That's what I do. That's how, you know, that's what I do. I've always done that. But nevertheless, I'm, I am I watch how other people treat someone that's that's next to me that may not be as well-groomed. Let's give them a, some extra love. And I'll be there to body with you, even if it's not the church I go to. I'll be, yeah. hey, you know, because I want to make sure it's an extension of the leaders, even on that's the right. job. That's right. To make sure that it works well. Uh, and I love how you said this. I want to say this. I love how you said create a uh, a five star team. You're mm -hmm. not leaving out anyone. You're, you're assessing your atmosphere. You're yes. assessing the people. And I, I love how you said you watch how they praise and worship, how they, they're there every Sunday. That denotes they're faithful. That's right. And they can be trusted because they're there every Sunday mm -hmm. and they're in position even as a member. That's and right. so you assess that and say, let's get them into something, even if it's not that event, it's something else. So mm -hmm. they can start becoming a part and that makes them feel inside like they are uh, helping. Like I say, we, 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 we can't keep using the same people. Mm -mm. because it's time now for them to go to the, it's okay for them to be over, but get some other people to help train and mm -hmm. build them up because they need to know how to serve, get the table served, come on, as volunteer, so other people can come and eat, including the leaders. Come on, that's leading them. Let me see how you can set the table up for me to eat off of. You are you gonna have it dirty and, and, and you know have done right. and, and you know chicken is half done and give me salmonella poison? How are you <laughs> see you've been eating off the table long enough? This is what I do with me and Pastor when we're moving people around. You know now you teach you train those that's underneath you so mm -hmm. they can serve that they can get the table ready to be served so they can serve up and be for people to come and eat off the table because then they don't they know that it's, it was harder work because people volunteer under people or whatever and they feel uh they eat 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 and then they don't know or they'll talk to them you know honey i can do that i and then when they have to serve up the table and they have to get it ready with the five course meal they go this is hard and yeah people bother them at home and things on the job and things right. in the ministry they go man you know it helps people get trained a little bit better to appreciate those that's leading them on the team and loving on them and thanking them for volunteering to help serve up a meal for God's people to come and partake by them putting their hands to the plow and then they understand the work of the ministry and the volunteer work that this, that's being done. So I love how you spoke about getting a five-star team. You know, let people give advice and let people give uh, suggestions on yeah. how things that will be done because people will give suggestions. And I want you to talk a little bit on this because we like to be balanced on both sides of the people that volunteer and they come and then they start being difficult because they're having problems or different and they don't say anything to their leaders uh, that's over the team. And then or just, just not consistent people because sometimes people can be inconsistent but get on a team and have the right leader to push them uh, to being more consistent or sometimes that's just people personality that they want to be seen and I want to be on this team and I'm a, and you go well go get the bats and then when it's time for the bats to be used they say well, who, who's supposed to get the bats sister Jolie Bell and sister Jolie Bell is nowhere to be found because she fell out and mad whatever's going on in her own personal life or she just don't feel like it at the time we can't serve with our feelings or we can't be good volunteers I want you to talk a little bit on that yeah, um, you have to make sure that, you know, it's 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 an old cliche and that they say leave, you know, whatever it is at the door that you are dealing with. Because if you come in that vein, in, in that spirit that um, if you come in that spirit of, of upset, angry about something before you even get there, you know, it's going to spill over. So mm -hmm. if you feel like it's it's it's. it's that that's that's in you, 
then I suggested you come. He's like, um, Wendy, I think I'm going to just sit this one out. I'm not having a good day and I don't and I don't want to mess this event up. I can respect that um, instead of you coming and you snapping at everybody and and, and not and, and making the event not good for anybody, not for yourself and not for the other person, because you see you, you need some things that you need to take care of within yourself. So yeah. I totally agree with you when you say that it's imperative that we know that our feelings are. And, and and our feelings are valid. So yeah. whatever you're feeling, if, if it's not a good day for you, it's okay. You know, it's okay because we all have bad days and, and, and you your heart was in the right place because you showed up and you said, I'm just not in that space today. I can respect that. I can respect that. Amen. And and to, and also too, when you are uh over the team and, and you're volunteering, you got people in your tier uh that's serving, you know, that's serving as a volunteer as well. Let them know how, when all these things are in position, how much pressure it takes off of the senior leaders, like Pastor Nick and myself, and Pastor Dewey and First Lady. Oh yeah, um, when 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 <laughs> when you have great leaders in place, mm -hmm. and you don't have to think about your hospitality team or your ushers or your deacons or your um, your deacon wise or whatever auxiliary is going on, if you have great leaders. And 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 they can take care of everything from the rooty to the tooting. Mm -hmm. That makes that's gonna make the event even better because guess what? He's not thinking about oh my god, are they are they letting everybody in on time? Oh my god, did they open the doors on time? Oh my goodness, <laughs> he's concentrating on his sermon. He's concentrating on his next move. He's concentrating on how how he's gonna galvanize his, this congregation to, to have a great evening and to put and get them in their worship. And he's trying to get in his worship mode as well. And his and he's trying to get in his headspace. He can't be worried about what's going on in the church per se mm -hmm. that night. Now right. during the during the week, if you got a question or, or if you or if or, and if you don't like something, he's he's probably gonna express that to you during the week. But when when or, or on the day of the event or on a Sunday morning. We need to always, the leaders need to have their act in order all the time, laid out mm -hmm. and with no questions. You can't, and please don't run to the pastor when there's a big issue. You you have to have leaders in place that's able to diffuse the situation until it's all over. And if it's that big an issue that you need to talk to the pastor about it, mm -hmm. then you wait, you still are able to diffuse it long enough that the, that the event is over and you can go and speak with him about it. Do not inundate your pastor or your first lady or your or your either one of your pastors with um, information that you know is going to uh, bottle his mind with something that he don't need to be thinking about right now. So, right. and that's I mean, same thing with um, when you're doing weddings. It, it just reminds me of um, how the bridesmaids. Are all in the in the business of the of the event planner, and then something happened. The bridesmaid run back and tell the bride when the when the event planner really has already fixed the situation. Right. But because the bride may want to be, you know, you know, want to take care of her friend or whatever, right. you're running and telling the bride. Yeah. Well, that's the same. It's the same in 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 the, in the church. You know, we all love our pastor. Oh, such such said such to the pastor. <laughs> Now you want to go and tell the pastor so you can be the first person that the pastor, you know, so you can say, oh, I told, I'm going to tell pastor. Well, you can tell him, but please tell him at the end of the event. Please right. wait until the event is over, because I guarantee you, if he has a good leader in place, she or he is going to handle that, whatever the situation is, and they will discuss it afterwards. And I absolutely love that. Our administrator is good for that. If you put a strong uh, administrator, uh, you know, we have levels of uh, authority and chain of command. Yeah. And it's really good because it burdens down the pastors uh, when you come and you try to throw that in. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. tell the pastors and the leaders that's really close around the pastor has to make sure they don't spill that spill out as well. Out. That's right. Handle that's it. Right. And, and I tell them all the time, but you, just, you know, they know me. I'm the sports wheeler. It looks like Pastor Nick is. <laughs> <laughs> because my smile <laughs> yeah you know, right he's a general don't get me right. wrong and i'm the captain but that we have different personalities right but really the same personality at the end of the day and so they you know so i say listen go handle we put you in this position 
lay and slay and talk and take names later. Tell later. us later. That's, because that's right. we trust you to do that because that's what we did in the ministry. I, you know, they was doing something, whatever. I just said, listen, cut that out. That's disrespectful. And yeah. you know, blah, blah, blah. And I didn't go run and tell my pastors. I just right. corrected them just, as being a and move on. there. And I went on and they said, oh, she told me. You know, you know yeah. I'm going this event. I had to do that one time. A lady uh -huh. was acting up and, you know, she know who I was and try to sit me over here. And then the man of God that was coming from the pulpit that God used me to bring in there said, right. where's Prophet Simpson? And she felt like me. It's like, you better get out of chair. All right. She was just carrying on because of her own personal feelings toward me. But I think right. they had that chair up there the next night and they made one that night because <laughs> they wanted to come. I'm going to be the one to bring the man, you know, help me the man in, the man of God in, the bishop in. And right. And shot and have a good time. And he's looking like, well, where's Robert Skill Simpson? I know what Reverend Nicholas is. You know, he's going to be adding my 1099. He and my faith came out on the rev and all that stuff. So he'll be here later in the seat next to her. See, but where is she? But she right. sat me way over off to the side mm -mm. doing a little messy movie. You know what I did? Okay, you know, first thing right. I had, you know, I told her whether or not for me and her, and they they thought I was just smooching up on her, but honey, I was correcting her. <laughs> <laughs> you really want because people watch your facial expression. They do. They when do. You are really a part of the ministry. They know uh -huh. who you are. They look like, who look like Pastor. Well, I'm just going, and I was like, okay, and then you, mm -hmm. and, okay, baby. And so, <laughs> so she saw man that she the one showed it was an attitude situation in her yeah. face. But I right. kept my composure. You understand what I'm saying? That's because right. character is everything to me, even in your facial expressions and in your behavior of your body language. All that speaks volumes. I learned all that. I, I don't feel, you know, I have to put all that in place. And so everything went well that night. Got, she sent me over and I was, you know, over to the side and it's a little messy mess. And I still concurred and sit right there. We're still praising God and carrying right. on because nothing shall stop us. People cannot control our emotions unless we allow them to. And That's so right. I did not allow her to because my pastors, I'm an extension of them. So I need to stay in posture. Amen. Amen. In position in spite of what was going on. So the event can go off without a hitch. Amen. And it all ended up well. So, uh, but I'm going to let you have the last words, woman of God. This has been so powerful about hospitality because it's all about the love. It's all about the love because at the end of the day, guess what? She said, that lady loves me. <laughs> <laughs> After all of that, you can't, honey, kill them with kindness. You can't beat love. Amen. She may not want to hear my preach words. She liked it that too, me being the prophet. But the love that I expressed to her in the difficult time being on another team, but you know, coming over into my area, it crushed everything within her about not staying a team together for the one common goal of number one, God, his people, and the leaders that we were serving. Amen. Amen. That's good. That's good. Um, Amen. basically, basically, I just want to say whenever, whenever you're going to do hospitality, customer service, or whatever the case may be, go in with a servant heart. Amen. Always go in with a servant heart. And 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 if you go in with a servant heart, I promise you everything else will fall in place. And always go the extra mile. Always Amen. try to go for the wow factor and don't um and don't complain. Um, just go in with a servant heart and give God and, 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 and everything we do, we got to give God the glory. So if you're giving God the glory, you're going to have a servant heart and you're going to and, and, and everything is going to be grand because we're giving God the glory at the end of the day. Amen. I love that. That's what it's all about. Giving God the glory and everything That's else you can deal with the later, because sometimes God is making you even in the midst of that. Come on now. That's right. That's you have right. your mind that way, that thing or whatever, that's difficulty or whatever. It will cause you to make a decision to humble down and to see your own self instead of them and they. They may have started it. But then when you go home and get in your car, you go, well, it's not really that serious. And think about that. You're giving God the glory and you've been and you're there to be a, a representation and an off and an and and extension of your leaders. That's all that it's about. And you're helping to make sure things flow and go and benefit the ministry so that souls can be saved. Amen. And God can get the glory and yeah. taking pressure off of whoever you can at the time to make sure things, because if you do it for others, God will do it for you. Amen. That's this right. I know for sure. We don't just say it. I'm glad we don't just say it because we're the leaders, but now you have another leader that's under a leader that mm -hmm. you know that that's what she comes to do. Amen. Yeah. 
And that's what she makes happen with events she puts on and just whatever she's asked to do there in the ministry. And see that big old smile? That's what she does. The next morning when I got in there, she was sitting right behind me. She, Pastor Carol, hey! She was the same way. She didn't know, like, well, I was nice to you because you was in with my father's event, but so I just don't want to, you know, miss you the next day. No, she was just as equally kind the next morning as she was that particular evening as the event took place. So thank you so much, Ms. Wendy Jackson. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It was great. I really enjoyed it. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. And give our your family our love. And, I and, and, and you guys are there until next time. Thank you. This has been a wonderful Wednesday. Wow. Hospitality. Get into it. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> Now, y'all know what time of day it is. Amen. Isn't that beautiful? It's all about the love. It's all about the love in the ministry from the head down. Show the love, the hospitality, customer service. Let me tell you, customer service is big with people. They will come back, not just the people that serve there unto the Lord in the ministry, but those on the outside will come and want to be a part of your ministry. And those that are there will want to stay being a part when you show the love and the thankfulness and the gratefulness for the team moving to express the love of God. Amen. And the love and extension of the leaders. Praise God. Amen. It's time for giving. Please go to our website at www.shekinaglorylv.org and plant your seed tonight. We appreciate you. We thank God for you. Thank you for joining the Wednesday. Wow. Amen. I'm Pastor Carol. And until next time, we'll see you later. Amen. God bless you. All right, Tri-City, let's finish telling this story. Just like a desert. Here it is.